Hi there, I'm Jamie Keat and welcome to Teachers Tech. Hope everyone's having a great day today. Today I want to kind of show you Pixlr. Pixlr is one of my favorite free graphics app. Uh, to me, it reminds me of using Photoshop about 10 years ago. It has a lot of the similarities with the tools, how they look. I like it how I can work with green screen to do, uh, to take some pictures, uh, put it on transparent backgrounds and superimpose them. So it's a great, uh, I think, all around app uh, for personal use or school use. Uh, so I'm going to walk through kind of just an overview of this but uh, if you want more specific tutorials look at the top right in the cards and I'll make different ones uh, that will get into the tools a little bit more or check the description down below so I hope you like this let's get started on this day and remember I do these weekly tech tips and if you like what you see please subscribe to my channel So there's a couple different ways you can get to Pixlr. The one I'm going to be showing you today is just using Pixlr.com, as you can see in the URL that I have. Uh, just type that in and you'll go to it. Uh, the other way, and I'll uh, do it at the end of this video if you're interested, you can actually, in your Google Drive, you can uh, put it to uh, connect with your Google Drive. You can see I have the Pixlr editor here. Um, I like to do that because then I can save everything to my Google Drive. Um, I'll be showing you how to save in the desktop in the free version, but stick around to the end to find out how to do that. So Pixlr, if you come to the Pixlr uh, page, uh, you might think, well, there's nothing there, but all you need to do is scroll down or hit the arrow at the bottom and you'll get ready to launch your picture, uh, launch your app. So this is the one I'm going to be working with today. It is the Pixlr uh, editor. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch the web app here. So it opens up fairly quick, quickly. And the one thing you'll notice right away is there they, uh, they do have ads in this. So this is one of the reasons they can keep this free. Um, but as I compared to in the intro, this really reminds me a lot of Photoshop, how it used to be. Of course, Photoshop is more powerful than this, but the way it's set up, if you understand Photoshop and looking for a free alternative, look uh, this way. So in this uh, example today, I'm gonna kind of be showing two of these. I'm gonna create a new image from scratch and I'm also gonna open an image on my computer to show you how it works. Uh, you can also take a URL from an image and just uh, paste it in. It's going to grab it from there. And if you uh, sign in, you can open images and create a free account. You can open it from Pixlr. Um, I don't have an account. I just usually use it from my Google Drive, but you can go ahead and check that out. So let's get started with just creating a new image here. So I'm just gonna click on create a new image. And uh, first of all, right away, you can see, you can give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this example here. And you have presets. So this is dealing with pixels here, 800 by 600. I can choose different ones. You can see that it kind of gives you, if you know what you're gonna be working with, do you want a banner? Uh, do you want something, uh, depending on the size and width, you can go kind of go through a list of what they already have uh, for this one. You can always adjust it after. So I'm just gonna go with the 800 by 600 here. Uh, transparent background, this is what I like about this program. A lot of programs uh, make you pay to use the transparency, but if you want a transparent background, meaning that if you're putting a picture on something and you don't want all that white around it, you can select a transparent background and save it as a PNG and it will work great for you. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK on this so I can start creating some art. And the first tool I'm gonna to show you is the brush tool. Uh, the brush tool is right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag uh, over here. You can see I have a circle selected and drag across. And I have, um, I just made uh, a line uh, with my brush tool. Uh, just a step backwards, I'm just gonna show you how to zoom in and zoom out. So if you wanted to change uh, when you're working on it, how large it looks. And so in my case, I can go up to view up here and zoom in. You can see the shortcut is also there. If I do the control plus, I can zoom in. And I also have a magnifying glass down here. Uh, it, if I just hover over it, you can see the plus, plus and click. But if I hold shift down, it turns to a minus and I can click and go out. So it's a quick way to zoom it up and uh, back and forth on an object because I can click on a certain part. And if I click on it, it will uh, just zoom up on it. So very quickly, and I'll just leave it like this in this example. So the brush tool, uh, what I like to do is show you the different customizations first. So color, always an important thing when choosing your different, uh, to make something more attractive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this right here. 
and I get this to open and I can select millions of colors. Uh, I, you can see from the top, I can go from HSL, RGB, web imaging on this one, but I'm just gonna leave it at HSL here. So for example, if I wanted a blue, I could click on this blue and then inside here, select another area of blue that I would like. So I'm just gonna click here and then hit OK. So now, as I go through, you can see I have a new color. Now what I really like is how you can customize the brushes. If you go up to the top here, uh, I'm just gonna do this drop down, and you can see I can quickly change the size, so maybe I wanted something smaller. I have a smaller brush now. If I go back, I can change, uh, these are presets too, I can change how soft the edges are on it, and I can even pick an image if I want to draw with. So if I wanted to draw with this star, I can go ahead. One thing to note is anytime you do something, uh, just like a lot of programs, there is an undo. So uh, we also have eraser, but always remember that control Z or control Z or undo is there to quickly get rid of your last step on it. Uh, so let's go back to uh, the brush again. If we're looking at the brush, you can see I have even different shapes, a square, and I can actually even customize my, um, uh, create my own brush with an, my own image and draw with it. Uh, so I could create it from like, for an example, a leaf and then draw with a leaf. But I'll show you how to do that in another video. Like I said, just take a look at the different cards of the different tutorials I have in the top right hand corner or look down below in the description. So another cool tool is the, uh, the pencil tool. So now if I click on the pencil tool, uh, you'll see me draw and it looks like kind of like an ink. Uh, well, if you look at the settings up here, that's what it's set to right now. So if I have ink, you can see how I can uh, change this if I want it sketchy, and it gives that sketchy look to it. Uh, I can quickly change my color again of uh, different things if I wanted that to be in a different color. So again, you can see if a person's artistic or even if you're not, you can create some amazing drawings with this program. Uh, so another thing uh, to point out, I mentioned the undoing, there is also the eraser here. So the eraser allows you to quickly erase something and you can kind of, you can get your uh, eraser more detailed to what you want. Maybe you want softer edges to give something uh, a different look or make things look more professional. You can also customize your uh, eraser on this too. Uh, so uh, go ahead and just start playing around, playing with the brushes and the pencils. And remember you always have edit undo or you have your um, eraser to make any change any mistakes that you might have made. Uh, the other uh, tool that I really like is the paint bucket. So the paint bucket allows me uh, to uh, quickly, almost like if I had a large can of paint, just drop it and it spreads out anywhere uh, that's a similar color. So if I click on the, um, on the white and I have this color selected, I'll just choose a different color here so it stands out. Uh, I'll choose this right here, this yellow. And if I click, it covers the whole thing with, since I clicked on the white, it changes everything to the white to the yellow. If I clicked on the blue, it would do, uh, it finds that similar color to replace. The edges were a little bit different there, so it didn't go all the different ways. So there's some effects that you can do with the paint bucket uh, on it. So if you need to color something quickly in a hurry and it's all the same color, use your paint bucket. Uh, this tool right here, uh, the gradient tool, is something I like to make uh, some really uh, neat graphics if you're working on uh, maybe thumbnails on YouTube or maybe uh, channel art or just making some uh, neat posters. This is a gradient tool. So the gradient tool, what it does is if I drag, uh, just hold down my mouse button and drag and create a line, it creates a gradient. Now right now, you can see it's a circle. I have it set to radial, so maybe I want it as linear. And if I drag it, you can see how it, now it's a linear. If I drag it longer, it creates a different effect to it. And I can change my angle and it creates, again, differently how I do this. So I can look through the different ways, the different settings, and this is where you just go through and play with these different things, uh, and then just seeing what it could, uh, what it can do for you. So between uh, selecting these, then going up to the top and changing the settings, you'll see in a hurry what you can do. So what I also wanna show you before I switch to the image one, uh, we also have our text in here so we can type things. So if I just uh, select my A here and select it, and uh, then we'll say, I'll just say welcome. And you can see I have different fonts that I can choose from. I'm just gonna leave this, uh, I'll go with 
I'll just go with a simple one right here, nice and thick. I can change my color uh, if I wanted like so and hit OK. So you can add your fonts quickly to this. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you in this one, the other thing you can add to this is shapes. Uh, and I'm just going to go right to here in my shapes tool. If you want to add some, you just can quickly click on it, select it. You have uh, different properties that you can change up top. You can see there's some border size. If I was selecting it again, how it changes the look with such a large border size. We have our fill shape to change the color and we have uh, different things that we can pick from the different shapes itself. So now, as I mentioned, I'm going to go over to an image and I'm going to open an image up right away. So I'm going to go back to file open image and this time I'm just grabbing it from my desktop here so I'm going to open this one of my twins that I have that were they uh, were doing a little experimenting with some uh, a wasp nest and uh, I'm just going to walk through some of the key uh, features of the rest of the tools here and this is another thing uh, if you have students again or you're playing around with it so many different things this free program can do so the first one I want to show you is I'm going to start with this rubber stamp tool right here. So the rubber stamp tool allows me to copy a certain area and I'm going to have to hold down. Now I have to hold down control shift and click on a certain area. So if I go over to Keegan's nose here and I hold control shift and I click my mouse, what I can do is actually create another Keegan over here so I can duplicate make a copy right on the same image so I won't spend the whole time but I could take a nose from a specific person or an eye and copy it right over to that point I could take one of these wasps and copy it over also so uh, moving on to the next tool and I'm going to jump up for a second here and just talk about this one right here this magic wand tool allows me to select certain colors I'm going to actually do a different video on that one so again check the playlist up top in the cards because I want to uh, I'll work with some green screen and doing some superimposing and that's the same thing with the lasso effect that I'll show you too so in this one I'll just continue on down below uh, this uh, I already showed you the color replacement we're on to these ones the blur tool so the blur tool if I click on it um, I can go over an area of a face so and you might not notice it right away uh, but it will blur so I'm just going to wiggle my mouse over top of the face here and leave it the one thing I, and if I show you on the right hand side notice there's a history over here history you can go back in time uh, to uh, the, the, your previous steps so if I click up at the top it's going to go back to my uh, original picture like so and if I go back it goes back to where I was so I'm just going to add a little blur what I find sometimes is when I'm using the blur tool it doesn't immediately show right away and then I wait a few seconds and then it does show uh, you can see with his face to his face there is getting to be a difference with the uh, this one isn't as clear anymore so again opposite of the blur tool would be the if I hover over any of these it shows exactly what it is this is the sharpen tool and this one down here is the smudge tool so it's easy to show on the graphics if I take uh, the smudge tool and let's say I go to Keegan's nose and I just grab it and I can stretch something out remember you can always undo I can just go back a step here and it's gone or I could do the edit undo or um, or as I showed you in the different drawings before the different erasers but I like using the history of this one uh, this is a sponge tool. This is for de desaturation of a certain part. I'm not going to be uh, using this one. I don't have it set up for this. Uh, so I'm just going to go on. I can talk about that in a different video. This is a dodge tool here. So it darkens and lightens certain areas. So if I click on it, again, I'll just use his face. So maybe I want that a uh, little bit lighter on it. You can see how it adjusts it there. Uh, this one hover over you can see this one is the burn tool red eye so if you need to get rid of the red eye I don't have any uh, red eye in this picture you can get rid of it I like this tool the spot heal tool so if there was a blemish on a face or a scar or cut I could get rid of it but I can also get rid of things right on this so if I show you maybe I don't want to see this right here I'm just going to click on this here a few times and it's going to be gone and remember, this is a free program. Just it does many of the things that Photoshop can do. If I want this wasp gone, click on it. It's gone. This one gone. So very easy to fix. If you're fixing blemishes on a face, think about using this program. If you don't have Photoshop, 
we have um, our bloat tool. So uh, if I click on a face for a bloat tool, it pushes it out. So the more I click on it, but then the opposite of it is a pinch tool and I can go back and push everything in and it'll keep pinching it in and in and in. So you can get some really uh, neat effects on this. Uh, I've I showed you this before, the eyedropper. The eyedropper can grab colors uh, from uh, anywhere. I showed you from the, the, the color select, but the uh, this one, whether you're using it on the drawing and you need a specific color, you can pull a color outside of an image. And then, uh, so if I was using my my draw tool, I can draw with that exact same color if I needed to add something or maybe if I was, I wanted some text in it. Remember, I can just use the text tool and write over top of this uh, to create a poster. And if I wanted a specific color that was same with the background, I can make sure I get it exactly uh, that way too. So uh, remember the zoom tool, as you go back and forth, you can zoom up on certain areas. There's so much to show you. I'm just trying to show you some key things to get you playing around with this today. A couple more things I wanna show you. Uh, we have our under our images. Maybe you wanna adjust the size of your image. Uh, so I'm gonna click on this one and you can see the size of this image. I uh, can change the size and I wanna click this uh, to make sure I constrain proportion so it doesn't stretch it out in any funny way. If you're changing the size of a graphic, I would, uh, wouldn't try to make it larger because you're gonna get it all pixely as it stretches uh, it out. But you can make it smaller and it will stay uh, maybe for a different format of whether you're putting into a document or web format uh, to use. So you can change your image size right through here and you can see how you can rotate your canvas uh, and a couple other things here too. Uh, I'm just gonna go over to filter and show you some neat things the filter can do. If you wanted uh, uh, some neat effects, just simply choose these uh, here's the kaleidoscope and I can change uh, the, the, the different, uh, I can go over the different properties of these to get them more specific too. If you want it, you can hit okay. I'm gonna hit cancel just to show you uh, some of the other ones here. Let's do the art poster and you can again, play around with how specific you want everything. You can inverse it to get a few different options. So uh, yeah, between uh, the filters and all the different other things you can be more specific on, there's lots of things you can do to a graphics. Remember the history to this. If you ever need to go back and get the original picture again, just scroll up through history and go back and take away steps. If you add new things on top of it, remember you're, you can you might be working with layers. So uh, you might need to check what layer you're on to add the effect to and they'll be right here and you just select them. So uh, I'm just gonna jump over to what I said at the beginning that I was gonna show you how to hook this to uh, Google Drive, how to add it as an app. I hope you like this interview, uh, sorry, this uh, overview today of Pixlr. I'm gonna add, as I said, a lot more tutorials. So check the cards to it to get more specific things. The magic one tool um, is a very cool to, uh, tool to work with, especially with green, uh, green screen and making some great effects with backgrounds. So let's move over now to how to set this up with Google Drive. I'm just inside my Google Drive and what I'm gonna do now is just go to where it says new and more and I'm gonna connect more apps. So at this point, when I connect more apps, I'm just gonna type uh, Pixlr in here and do a search. And what I want is the Pixlr editor. You can see there's Express, but oh, I was showing you the editor uh, today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect this and make Pixlr the default app, sure, that it can open and I hit okay. So now when I go uh, over to new, you'll see that I actually have uh, Pixlr editor hooked to my apps. If you wanted to get rid of this, if you didn't want it here anymore, just go over to your settings and then go to settings here and over to manage apps. And you can see, uh, scroll down and find it. You have options here, what you can do for it. And you can disconnect it from drive if you don't want it there any longer. So I'm gonna hit done here. Uh, so you can open it up right from here and it's gonna open up and I'm gonna connect it to a, an account here and allow it to connect. So I'm just gonna quickly open a, create a new image and I'm just gonna, uh, I'll just draw something really quickly on it. And when I save it this time, 
notice it has a Google Drive option. So I can save this one. I'm just going to call it uh, test, test one, and hit OK. And the image is saved. So if I go back over here, I'm just going to refresh this to make sure it was all there. I can see if I scroll down, here's test one. It's saved right to uh, my drive on this one. So I hope you like this uh, kind of walkthrough of uh, Pixlr today. I was just trying to give an overview to get people using it, uh, something I show with my students. As I said, I'm going to put more uh, more tutorials. Just look at the uh, my, my cards and description down below in the playlist that I have for this. I want to grow this over time so people are more familiar with it. Remember, I do these weekly uh, tech tips and just keep uh, updated with different things. Check out my newsletter at Teachers Tech uh, so I can connect with you a little bit more too. Thanks for watching this week and I'll see you next time.